We're here today with Kevin Warbach, Wharton Professor of Legal Studies and Business Ethics, to discuss the current debate over wireless spectrum allocation and how it impacts businesses and consumers. Kevin, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. First of all, could you just quickly define spectrum? What is it and how does it work? Spectrum is uh, really the capacity for wireless communication. The, the best definition that I found of spectrum uh, is uh, attributed to Albert Einstein, but uh, he probably never said it. And uh, the story goes like this. He said, um, imagine a really huge cat. Um, it's so big that uh, its head is in one part of the city and its tail is in another part of the city. You squeeze the tail and all the way at the other end the cat meows. He said, all right, that's wired communication. That's like your, your landline telephone. Wireless, which is what uses spectrum, is exactly the same, except there's no cat. So spectrum uh, is basically the, the way that we make use of the airwaves, uh, the frequencies over the air for cell phones, Wi-Fi, garage door openers, and so forth. Right. And now we're currently, currently experiencing something of a wireless spectrum crunch, I understand. Now, what are the different forces that have come together to create this problem? There has been a tidal wave of demand for wireless data. You think about uh, the iPhone, the first uh, really successful commercial smartphone, only about six or seven years old. Um, and last year, something like a billion smartphones were sold. Uh, and tablets like the iPad use even more data. Um, the networks that we have today have to carry uh, many more times the level of data traffic of the networks of a few years ago, and the trends are even for more explosion of that data usage. So basically everybody is taking, even maybe just me on my iPhone, I'm taking a tiny little piece of the pie, and so is everybody else. Well, it's, it, it, the challenge is it's not a pie. Um, because uh, Spectrum, is, it's not a wire. You're transmitting over the air, and then another device is trying to receive over the air. And the challenge is um, the devices, as they get smarter, can use the Spectrum more efficiently. Because a really good device can, can find a signal where a, another device didn't. Uh, and there are different technologies and approaches that can be used. And also, the government sets up the framework under which Spectrum is accessed. So yes, generally, the, the more people that are trying to use things, the more uh, uh, use of data. So for example, video requires much more capacity than text. Uh, and so all of the streaming video that's happening is taxing networks. But uh, how much uh, the demand affects the networks depends on all these other factors. Mm -hmm. And so what is the current debate over spectrum allocation and what are the proposals on both sides? We've had this debate for uh, about the past decade. But it's really coming to a head now. Uh, traditionally, the government allocated spectrum through a command and control mechanism. So they would say, all right, here's all the frequencies. We'll divide them up. Um, this spectrum is for television broadcasters. We'll either give it to them or have some mechanism, uh, typically in recent years, to auction it off. This spectrum is for cell phone companies. Um, and they would parcel out spectrum that way. Um, the problem is that uh, that doesn't use spectrum nearly efficiently enough. The, the estimates are that the actual usage of spectrum is roughly 10 percent. Uh, in other words, roughly 10 percent of the spectrum, if you looked at all of it, is actually in use at any time. Um, tremendous inefficiencies in the system. So um, the debate has been about how do we improve that. Um, and one view has been we just need to give uh, more exclusive property rights uh, to people that get the spectrum, because the idea is then they'll buy and sell it and, and use it more efficiently. The other view, which is really where I come down, is that there are all sorts of technologies that now allow spectrum to be shared. So we don't need exclusivity. Um, we can actually maximize use of the spectrum. And that becomes even more important now as, as demand increases. Now, I was reading some of the things you've written about this recently, and you were saying that there actually is a surprising amount of sharing going on right now by even some of the really big names in this whole business. And could you talk a little bit about that and also why having more sharing would actually increase what these different businesses are able to do or even allow more people to use it? Yeah, so this is what's changed in the debate, although not everyone quite realizes it. It used to be you had uh, people favoring property rights on one side and people favoring what's called unlicensed use. So things like Wi-Fi devices, the, the access points you might use with your computer or your uh, other device, uh, are, are spectrum that is dedicated by the government for unlicensed use. Uh, but what's happened increasingly is those have come together. So for example, you think about your iPhone. It's got a cellular radio on it that uses 
uses licensed spectrum, and it's got a Wi-Fi radio and also a Bluetooth radio uh, that use unlicensed spectrum. Uh, and increasingly, there are ways to do some of both. Um, so for example, the, the President's Science Advisory Board, a group called PCAST that reports to President Obama, um, looked at the challenge of federal spectrum. So there's a tremendous amount of spectrum that is used by government agencies, uh, mostly the military, but also the FAA and all sorts of other agencies. And they use it really inefficiently. And they don't necessarily need as much as they have, whereas there's tremendous demand in the private sector. Um, but the problem is they're still using it for things. And the challenge is if you have this military radar that's only on part of the time and part of the country, but that still serves some valid um, defense purpose, how do you make that spectrum available the rest of the time to the commercial sector? And it turns out that we can use these sharing mechanisms to do that, give the government agencies the, uh, the protection they need, but also allow other access. Um, so increasingly what we're, what we're seeing is these things are coming together. Right. Now, another thing you had written about was about um, white space, like between channels. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that and explain mm -hmm. how that fits in? One of the projects that the FCC has been shepherding for, again, roughly the past 10 years is opening up the so-called white spaces around broadcast television channels. So the way television is set up in terms of spectrum is based on the technology of the 1950s. Um, and back then, devices were really dumb, so they had these guard bands that would say, no one can transmit here so that the station on, a TV seeing the station on one side will be able to distinguish it from the station on the other because there's a big space in the middle. Well, today's technology is so much more efficient that we can actually use that, that space in the middle, have someone transmit transmit there and the devices on either side won't see it. Um, this is all uh, being put into place while the FCC is looking at reallocating that television spectrum. So we've moved to digital television in the United States um, and now the FCC is doing what's called an incentive auction where they're trying to get broadcasters that aren't really using their spectrum to give it back in return for a payment that comes from auctioning the spectrum. And the challenge is if the FCC does that in the wrong way, it will actually close off this white space. It will basically only make spectrum available to those who buy it at auction, uh, which doesn't leave a lot of room for experimentation, for little players, new players to come in, people in rural areas who don't necessarily have those resources, um, and the whole massive industry that makes devices to come up with innovations that take advantage of that open white space. Um, so, so that's partly why I've been writing recently that the FCC has to decide this in a way that leaves open that capacity for sharing and innovation. So it sounds like, I mean, one of the main things that the industry and the government are grappling with is that you have a system that was created years and years and decades and decades ago to do something, and now just the world of technology, the world of broadcasting has completely changed. Really what we're grappling with is um, our, our failure to appreciate what spectrum is and, and the failure of our metaphors. So we think it's like a resource. We think it's like land, say, and there's so much of it and it gets used up and this parcel of land is here and that parcel of land is there. It doesn't really work that way um, because everything is contingent. Uh, whether there's what's called interference, uh, people think that it works like if I transmit here and you transmit here, that the, the signals run into each other. Actually, they pass through each other. They're just you know, beams of energy. Um, it's all a question of the devices and how they are able to interpret information. Um, so what we really need to do is understand that, that sharing is really part of spectrum no matter how we use it. Even in the so-called exclusive rights, we're sharing by giving you one frequency and someone else another frequency. Um, so we need to, to have a broader perspective that uh, this is not about, say, you know, capitalism versus communism when we talk about sharing and property rights. Really, we're talking about maximizing capacity. We're talking about what configuration uh, lets the spectrum be used the most intensively. Um, and you're absolutely right. That, that needs to be done in context of today's technology as opposed to old, outmoded assumptions. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a point where we could eventually hit a wall and there is no more spectrum? Or? Well, see, again, uh, the spectrum is always there. And it doesn't get used up. If I transmit over the air with my device, that spectrum doesn't suddenly go away. The moment I stop transmitting, um, it's clear again. Um, so the issue is um, how much can we make spectrum use more efficient? Um, and again, it all depends on the, on the infrastructure. So for example, you take a, a cellular network, like your, your typical cell phone system, um, they can create more spectrum by putting in more towers because they're basically subdividing it more. So you're only connecting to a local area as opposed to a much wider area, but that costs money. 
and there are other trade-offs there. The same thing with the sharing. Uh, there are, you know, there are trade-offs in terms of efficiency um, and and so forth um, with these different mechanisms. So, at some point, yes, there's a theoretical limit. We actually don't know what it is. Um, there there are many practical limits, um, but but again, if you look at um, all the capacity that's out there, we're not using most of it. So so potentially, we've got a long way to go. So tell me, like I guess. In terms of like for the average consumer, the average business, I mean, why why is this debate so important? Like, how does the outcome of what is decided about spectrum allocation impact me, the iPhone owner, or just a business that's trying to offer a Wi-Fi network or other stakeholders like that who maybe don't think even think about it much? Yeah, it means a few different things. One, one thing it means is you know, will there be enough capacity for these devices? So. Uh, will you be able to get good quality at affordable prices? And will service providers be able to continue de developing and deploying new kinds of innovations, especially uh, video, things that, that use high amounts of capacity, as well as what's called the Internet of Things, all of these wearable devices and sensor-based devices all throughout the world. Uh, it's a question of whether that's actually going to work and be available uh, or is going to run into limits of spectrum. Um, or it's also a question of whether that will be an open space for innovation um, or will really only be limited to the companies that buy the spectrum at auction uh, and therefore can control it and, and price it and so forth. Um, certainly there's value in companies having that exclusive control, um, but it needs to be in an environment that allows for open innovation. Um, so it's not that your, your iPhone is going to shut off tomorrow, uh, but it's really a question of whether this space will continue to be a, a fountain of innovation going forward. Um, and also it's important, for example, in, in urban areas um, and in rural areas um, where typically there isn't access to the same broadband capacity. Some of these spectrum sharing mechanisms are, are really well suited um, to uh, reaching those areas because, again, they don't depend on a company paying billions of dollars at an auction and then being able to monetize the service. So now, I guess with urban areas, I can see how the capacity issue is that there's a lot of people. Tell me what the issue is with, with rural areas. You've mentioned that a couple times, that they, there are people that could potentially benefit from this. The issue in rural areas is it's not uh, necessarily economical for companies to serve them. Uh, they don't have the same level of broadband capacity because they don't have the density and it's expensive to build these traditional networks. Um, but there's lots of open capacity. So, for example, this white space technology that, again, works in between television channels works really well, well in rural areas because there are not that many TV stations. Um, and, and those are the areas, again, where there's, there's potentially great demand because they're not served by the existing networks. And now for people who are, I mean, are interested in this issue or watching this issue, I mean, what are some of the, I guess, sort of big things coming up to watch for or some of, I guess, things that need to happen in order for more sharing to occur, which it sounds like what you're advocating is kind of a system where we're doing some sharing, but there's also some exclusivity there. Uh, so, so the government has a series of decisions to make. The, the Federal Communications Commission is moving forward this process, the, the so-called incentive auction. They just um, recently did a status report. The auction is supposed to happen in 2015. But there's a, a series of steps that the FCC will be announcing along that process. Um, and then similarly, the FCC, as, long as, as well as what's called NTIA, which is a, a technology group within the Commerce Department, um, are managing most of this process of repurposing federal spectrum. Um, so again, it's a set of decisions. Congress is following along and, and potentially helping or potentially pushing in the other direction. So I think it's it's something definitely where, where members of Congress are going to be speaking out and introducing legislation. And, and there's a real danger of, again, this being pushed in a direction that squeezes out the sharing just because people don't appreciate um, the value that it brings. Great. Kevin, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you.